Hello friends, this is Shelly. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so glad that you're part of my Koala Knits and Knacks channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and be sure and hit that thumbs up. But you know what? We're going to make these beautiful, beautiful coasters. I put this tutorial, made a tutorial like this about a year and a half ago, maybe almost two years ago when I first started my channel. Um, but back then I didn't have any extra lighting or anything and the shadows were really bad. And so I have decided that I'm going to redo that video. And in doing so, I, uh, I tweaked the pattern just a, a slightly, um, just slightly, and I think you're going to really, really love it. So grab your five millimeter crochet hook and your favorite yarn. I'm using Big Twist yarn in the colors Deep Red and White. But you know, you don't have to make these for Christmas. You can make these in your favorite colors to match your deco decor and have them for all year round. They're beautiful coasters and the size, you're going to love the size of them. And they're five inches across. And so, and I show you that in the end of the video as well. But I, uh, I'm happy to be showing you this tutorial again, and I would love to see your color choices and the ones that you make. So please post in my Facebook group. If you're not a part of that, I will have the link in the description box below this um, video. So I'd love for you to come over and join us there. That would be wonderful. We have a wonderful group and uh, you're gonna enjoy it and be inspired from there. So once you have your supplies, friends, let's get started. All right, friends, we are going to begin. I have my big twist yarn in deep red and I have my five millimeter hook. We're going to start by putting a slip knot on our hook. Now you can choose to start with red or you can choose to start with white or you can do what I've done. I'm going to do two with the red as the base and um, two with the white as the base. We're going to do the red together because it's easier for you to see it against my, my tray here. I'm going to do a slip knot onto my hook. I wrap this around my finger twice, crossing over the second one. Then I go under this first one can do this easier when it's not so far away from my body. I grab that one on the, the other one and I pull it through. And then I have a slip knot. Let me do that again because that might have been a little bit confusing. This is what I do. I wrap it around, I pick up, go under, grab that one and bring it through. <laughs> I can't do it slowly. I have to do it fast. But there's many ways to do a slip knot. You choose which is the best for you. Once you have your slip knot on your hook, you're going to yarn over and bring it through that loop that's on your hook. That's one chain. That's two, three, and four. We need four. And in that fourth chain from the hook, the first one that we did, so one, two, three, four, we're going to do 10 double crochets. I'm going to yarn over, go into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, make it the same height, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. That's one double crochet. This knot was, will slowly move down here and we're, we'll tighten it later, so no worries. But as you go along, you can tighten it a little bit if you need to. I'm gonna yarn over, go into that stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through two, and go through two. And we're gonna do one more and then we're gonna add our stitch marker. Now I always do three before I add my stitch marker because it's easier for me to count back. One, two, three, if you have a few stitches. So I'm going to take my handy dandy bobby pin, which is what I use for stitch markers. That's three. And I'm going to continue on. Four. Five. Six. This is actually a, quite a quick tutorial. Seven. Eight. Nine. And one more makes 10. So you'll be able to whip these up in no time, put on your favorite movie at night and make a set and you've got a gift. And we're going to pull on that yarn strand while you while you hold that knot and pull it, slide it down just like that. Okay, so we have 10 double crochets plus our chain, uh, that chain three that was the three, we, we went into the fourth chain, so that left us with a chain three before that, and then our double crochet started. We're gonna go into that first double crochet where we put our stitch marker. We're going to yarn over, bring it through, and then through the loop that's on your hook. I'm gonna take that stitch marker out, and then I've just slip stitched to join. There's our first row. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna chain two, one, and two, and we're going to do an increase row. So into that space that's right below your chain two, which does not count as a double crochet. We're going to yarn over. We're going to go into that space, yarn over, drop a loop. You've got three loops on your hook. Go through two, 
yarn over and go through two. That's one double crochet. You're gonna put another one into there. And now you've got two double crochets, which is an increase in that first stitch. Now we're gonna go over to the next one, yarn over into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then just turn your hook a little bit, bring it up so they're all the same height. Yarn over, go through two, yarn over and go through two. So that's one double crochet in this second stitch. We're gonna do another one because every stitch has to have two. Now, when you've got two of them done, two stitches done, you're gonna count back four. One, two, three, four. Pop in your stitch marker. If you're new, you don't need to, or you you always want to make sure you use a stitch marker. If, if you have crocheted for years like what I have, um, and you can find that stitch easily. You don't have to use a stitch marker. Of course, you know that. Um, but if you're new, I'm going to um, encourage you to always put a stitch marker in there because uh, um, it really affects your row counts if, if you don't get the right stitch when you're joining, okay? Or when if you're doing a straight piece, you need one at the, at the uh, end to know where your end stitch is, okay? So always use stitch markers if you're a new, a new crocheter. So I've got four now. One, two, three, four and two into the next one. That's six all together. We're increasing this row. We started with 10. We're gonna have 20 in this row. So we're gonna keep going around, putting two double crochets. Make sure you have slack coming out of your ball. Two double crochets in each stitch. Count them if you need to as you go so that you make sure that you're not, you aren't missing any. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10 and I'm putting two in each 11 and 12 13 and 14 15 and 16 I'm letting that yarn just slip through my fingers I'm not putting any extra tension on it just a like a very soft tension did I say 16? I want to count the right way with you. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And it's good to count because you'll see this and you'll think, oh, there's a stitch I gotta put in there. And it's kind of like a fuller stitch. Um, it's not one that you that you work into. And to, to make sure, you just go ahead and you count. You count all your double crochets. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I know I've got them all. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into that stitch with my stitch marker in it. And see, this is why I love bobby pins because then I just pull it out. I'm going to yarn over, go through that stitch, then I'm going to take it through the loop that's on my hook. That is a slip stitch to join. We have now finished round two. How fast was that? So for round three, what we're going to do is we're going to chain up two into that base of that stitch that's right there. You see, we're following it down. It's right there. We're going to put two double crochets. One, this is another increase row, but on the third row, we do it different. And two. And in the next one, we only put one and three. Basically, you're counting to three. It's row three. You count to three. So two in the next one. You count to three, always starting with an increase in the first stitch. Two. And then one in the next makes three. And that's how if you were to if we were to do an increase on another row, which we're not going to, but I'm just gonna give you this little tip. If you're doing this bigger for any reason, you would do one, two, three, four for row four, and then one, two, three, four for all the way around. If you're on on uh, the fifth row, you do your increase in the first one, and you do, so that's two, and then three, four, five, a single one in each of the next three. That's how we increase on every row. So very, very easy once you get that visual. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my stitch marker I'm gonna pop it in that first stitch right there. And I'm gonna continue around. I'm on row three, so I am putting two in the first one. One and two. And one in the next one. That makes three. Row three. Next one has two, one. 
two in the same stitch and one in the next. Do that all the way around and we shall end with 30 double crochets in this row. Just finished my 30. Now you're gonna see that it's looking like a little bit of a bowl. That's okay because it will flatten out. And once we uh, once we put our next um, rib, like our edging on, our peppermint edging, um, it's gonna help that to stay down. Um, but that's why you do not want any tight tension. If I did tight tension, it, tension, it would curl up like this and I'm not gonna be able to flatten it down. So once we give it a little bit of a stretch and uh, just play with it a little bit, it will be totally fine. I'm going to double check two, four, six, I mean not two, four, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, 6, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Always double check your work and then you won't be sorry later. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch to join to that first double crochet. just like that, and we're going to begin our edging. We're going to chain up five, one, two, three, four, five. Then what I want you to do is pull that loop because we're gonna set this down and we don't want that to unravel, okay? I'm gonna put my red over there. I'm gonna grab my white. I'm gonna put a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to go into that very next stitch. Now this is where I'm doing it different on this patterning. Um, well, this is the second thing I'm doing different. On, the, on my other video, if you have made it from there, I did 19. As I was thinking about this, I thought that, that you know, isn't as accurate as what it could have been. Because then what I did is I joined um, the first two in the same stitch, but I thought I'm gonna do 20 and I'm going to join it in the next stitch and I actually like that better. So this one here is representing, when you follow it down, you look and here's that loop right there. This is for this red one. We're gonna go into that next one, our second stitch. We're gonna pop our hook through. We are going to yarn over bring that loop through the red and then through the white, through the hoop, look, loop that's on your hook and then pop that in the back there. You're going to chain up five. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to make a big loop so you can set this down and not have it unravel. I just pulled on my end so that's why that happened. Now you're going to pop this down. You're going to take your red one. You're going to put your hook back into that big loop Pull on this to make it tighter. With this push down like that, you're gonna go into that next stitch and you're going to slip stitch to join. So you're gonna put your, let me do that again. You're gonna put your hook through, you're gonna yarn over and bring it through. Then you're gonna put it through the loop that's on your hook. You're gonna chain up five. One, two, three, four, five. Make a big loop, okay? Okay, so now what we have to do, we've just done the red one. Here's our white one. We don't wanna get all of our yarns tangled. I'm gonna pick this one up and I'm going to, see how it's crossing over there? The red one's crossing over. I'm gonna take this and I'll put it underneath and put it over top because we're gonna work on the white one again, okay? And this is the only one you ever have to do that with. Just let the red one stay where it is all the time. And every time you're, you're doing the white one, then you'll just cross it underneath just so that you can untangle it. I'm gonna pull up on that loop that I almost lost. Okay, then I'm gonna hold this red one down and into that very next stitch right there. You see, so this red one's coming out of this, this stitch. We're gonna to go to that next double crochet. We're going to slip stitch to join. Pull through and then pull through the loop that's on your hook. We're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. Pull up on your loop. Let that go down. Take your red one. 
put your hook in that loop, pull that loop tight, hold this one down, we're going to go into that next stitch, which is right there. See how easy this is? And we're going to slip stitch to join into that stitch, draw up a loop, take that loop and put it through this loop that's on your hook, chain five, one, two, three, four, and five, make a bigger loop so it doesn't come undone. Set that down, bring this under and around so it's not tight. Now make sure you don't lose your, I gotta make my white loops a little bit longer. Then I'm gonna fold down, fold down that red one. I'm gonna go into my white one. Otherwise, if I didn't pass this under and around, this would start to tangle around and that's the frustrating part. So you just have to do it with the second color, which is my white, okay? Into that next stitch, we're gonna slip stitch to join. And we're going to chain up five. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to make a bigger loop that time. Pop that down. We're going to go into this red one. We have to pop that down because these are going over every time. See how it goes over? And it's forming that little um, design. It's just so, so pretty and so simple. Into that next stitch, we're going to slip stitch to join. We're going to chain up five. Okay, taking our white yarn, we're gonna pass it around and over. We're gonna grab that last white one that we did. We're gonna hold the red one down now and we're gonna go into that next stitch. We're gonna slip stitch to join. Friends, we are going to do this all the way around. One, two, three, four, five. Pull up, put that down pick up the red one, and once you get the swing of this, you are going to whip this up so fast, you won't even believe it yourself, okay? And so we're going to have, starting with this one, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. We are going to keep alternating till we have 30 of them done. And because we started with the red, we're gonna end with the white, okay? I'm gonna keep going around, doing the same thing, and when I get close to the end, I'm gonna come back and we will work off the end together, okay? Bringing that around, oops. Holding that down into that next stitch. We're gonna slip stitch and we're gonna chain five. Making a bigger loop with that one. Also making sure that we can have some slack coming out of our ball. We're going to take our next one. We're going to continue around. Enjoy the process, friends. It's fun. You know, I'm just going to pop on here or, or continue on here before we take um, take off and finish it around. Get rid of this, this end here because it keeps getting tangled around your strands that are there. So take this, put it on your needle, and hide it around your first row stitches. Going underneath that first row stitches. Just part way around, you don't need to do the whole thing. And then back again, just on a few stitches. That will get this out of your way. Cut it off. I was finding it was uh, tangling around my ends and so that will make it a lot easier. Now I'm going to continue on, okay? So I'm going to grab my white one pop this one down go into that next stitch slip stitch to join chain up five and continue around and that little end is not getting in my way all right we're at the end and i cut off my long tails here so that you can see without the balls getting in the way and all this extra strands but this one counts as 29 and this one is 30. Okay, so you see here's where that little fake stitch is. Here's our first stitch right there. We're gonna take this red one and we're going to go into where the first red one comes out. So that first stitch. So here's here's our, um, our first one here and here's the base of that stitch. So if I pull that up on there, 
see how that is coming out there? This is the base of the stitch. We're gonna go into the base of that first stitch. Oops, not there, that's behind it. The base of the first stitch, so let me show you that again. Here's where, where it's joined right there, and here's that first stitch. We're gonna go into the base. I'm gonna get this white one out of the way. And we're going to slip stitch to join. Pull up a loop, go through that loop on your hook. Then you're gonna yarn over, pull through that loop. You're gonna cut off your tail. Then you're gonna pull it through and you're gonna knot it off. Set that aside. You're gonna grab your last one, which is your white one. And this one's easy to find because you're gonna go into that second stitch where that white strand is right there. So you're gonna yarn this over, go into that same one Yarn over, slip stitch to join, yarn over, pull through, cut it off, pull that tail through, and pull tight. Then I'm going to stick my hook into there from the back to the front, grab that yarn tail, pull it through. Oh, I don't like yarn tails. They drive me crazy. <laughs> they drive me absolutely mental, but we work through them, right? We get through it. And there you go. We have the, everything intertwining the way that it needs to. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm gonna take these, these tails from the back and we're going to hide our ends. Find my little needle. Pop this on and I'm just gonna go down one of those double crochets. Pull it through. Maybe go down a little bit further. And then I'm gonna come up. I'll put these metal needles, wool needles in the description box below. So please have a look um, and click on the link there if you wanna order them. They're my favorite, favorite needles. Cut that off. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna hide my yarn tails for the other ones. Hiding these ones in the white strands. So I'm gonna go through one way and then come back the other way, cut them off. Okay, there you go. Isn't it like absolutely beautiful? I'm gonna give you the measurements of this particular one. This one is five inches across. Like that's a perfect size for a coaster. Now on the other video that I did, I used, I think I used a 4.5 millimeter hook and they were quite a bit smaller actually. I like this size better. So this is the new and improved coaster set, <laughs> okay? Now I made four of them, didn't take me very long at all. But how pretty are they? They're just so beautiful. You're going to want to make yourself a set. So friends, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please be sure and show me your coasters in my Facebook group. Make them in whatever colors you like. You know, you could also make this first row and the third row the same color. And then this second row a different color. And then do your outside edging um, in the two in, in the two colors, just like we, what we've done here, but alternate uh, those two colors here in the center. And that would be beautiful. Use whatever colors you love. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. Please be sure and show me in my Facebook group. I'll have the link in the description box below. Um, also, if you post in other groups, please, please always post the link. Um, I would appreciate that so very, very much. All right, friends. So thanks again for joining me. I uh, always enjoy spending time with you. I say that in every video because it's true. <laughs> you guys are the best and I appreciate you so, so very, very much. Take care. Enjoy the process and uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.